Some examples of disorders that are caused by something as simple as a point mutation include sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, and also color blindness. In sickle cell anemia, a substitution occurs in the gene which codes for the type of polypeptides which make up hemoglobin, and this creates a change in one of the 146 amino acids um, in that polypeptide. So it's changing a glutamic acid to valine. Now, because of this, the shape of the entire hemoglobin molecule is altered, and it leads to a reduced capacity in being able to carry around oxygen. So here is what a sickle cell actually looks like, and you'll see them in different versions around because of that different hemoglobin, and that's what a sickle actually is. Now, this can lead to problems with blood flow in the tiny capillaries, but interestingly, it can actually make people uh, less prone to malarial infections because the malarial parasite then reproduces inside the red blood cell, and they're less likely to do it in sickle cells. And sickle cell is pretty prevalent amongst communities in Africa, the Mediterranean, India, and the Middle East. In cystic fibrosis, it's caused by a three base deletion across triplets, which results in the deletion of an amino acid uh, phenylalanine. So this occurs in a gene for a polypeptide involved in forming channels across the cell membrane uh, to control the movement of chloride in and out of the cell. Now, because this frame shift leads to the production of a faulty polypeptide, the cell can actually recognize it and destroy it before it reaches the cell membrane to implant. People with cystic fibrosis usually have to inherit two mutated alleles for this phenotype to be present. Um, and as kids, they have really poor growth and poor weight gain despite normal food intake. They have super salty skin and shortness of breath and chest infections because the, there's mucus building up in their lungs. Now, while these mutations lead to different health conditions, some mutations in genes can actually lead to good outcomes. And from an individual perspective, some mutations can lead to health benefits, such as a mutation in apolipoprotein A1 gene, right? And this gene usually transports uh, cholesterol and phospholipids to the liver. And a known version of this, a mutant version of this gene, actually lowers the risk of cholesterol building up in the arteries, and it decreases the risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, from a a population's perspective, different gene mutations can be beneficial from a survival or even reproductive perspective, and we'll cover more of this down the track when we learn about natural selection and evolution of species. Now, mutations can occur for many reasons. Generally, they occur randomly, right? They are spontaneous, or, you know, another way of saying that is de novo. Then mutations that arise, they can randomly appear during replication, and these might be errors that are not fixed, but again, these are very rare. If mutations are induced, they can be induced through phys or induced physically, chemically, or through biological agents. Now, muta uh, mutagens are things which increase the natural rate of mutation when DNA is exposed to them. If we're talking things like physical mutagens, uh, we're talking things like ionizing and non-ionizing energy. We're talking UV rays, X-rays, nuclear energy, and heat energy. Now, the particles emitted from these types of energy have, um, you know, can have sufficient energy to actually disrupt the atoms and the molecules within the DNA structure. For things like UV rays, public awareness is really heightened, so we protect ourselves in sun smart ways. Uh, for people who deal with you know, x-rays, so x-ray technicians, they can wear lead-lined uh, PPE to protect themselves from receiving really high doses of this energy every day. Nuclear energy can actually produce double-stranded DNA breaks in the molecule, and these can be lethal as they're difficult, they're too difficult for the body to actually repair. Now, heat only rarely causes problems. It actually breaks the bond between the sugar and the nitrogenous base. Uh, on that nucleotide in the DNA, and this can lead to gaps in DNA molecules and disrupt the replication mechanism. Chemical mutagens also interfere with the replication mechanisms as some of the chemical structures can mimic those in the nitrogenous bases, and these are called base analogs. Um, and this might lead to, to faulty base pairing as some of the template strands uh, sorry, as the template strand of DNA is misread. So some chemicals uh, can cause modification to the actual bases themselves, and some mutagens are also carcinogens, and that can cause cancer, uh, which is common if the mutation occurs in an oncogene. Now, usually if some cellular mechanism goes wrong, a cell can recognize it and undergo programmed cell death, but if an oncogene is mutated, the cell can continue to divide really rapidly with those errors in tow and can cause a cancerous cell line. 
Biologically, viruses and bacteria can actually change the genetic composition of a cell by integrating their DNA into the genome when the cells divide. And there's some really recent evidence to suggest that COVID-19 as a virus, and it's a type of virus that can insert itself into our genome when it affects us. So on that positive note, again, we are really only looking at the two there. We are talking more about cell division, chromosome abnormalities, and non-disjunction later on.